if there is one stereotype of your specialty, what would that be? Hmm. The fact that we sell drugs. <sighs> Hello, fam Emily. Hi. Hi, Dr. Gospel. Yeah, thank you. It's good to have you on the channel today. I'm sure Avias will be very excited to see your face and have a pharmacist, you know, talk with them. So I will let you do like the proper introduction. So can you tell us your full name? Okay, I'm also excited to be here. Okay. And my name is Emily Sika mm -hmm. and I'm a pharmacist. I'm currently interning with the University of Abuja Teaching Hospital. Um, and basically <laughs> that's all about me. All right. Yes. Um, now, prior to you're going to the university to study pharmacy as, you know, when you were in high school, what course or courses did you think you would study okay um i think since we're talking about high school now that's like secondary school yeah. in nigeria um in secondary school i would say there were some subjects that i enjoyed during um from my gs to my ss i think especially in my ss1 because in ss1 in nigeria you get to do both the arts and the science i don't know if that was the case for everybody yeah, i think they've modified that now <laughs> but in our time definitely okay. like 18 subjects yes, yes. Yeah. so um i enjoyed doing the art subjects some of them um like literature in fact i think literature was like my favorite subject because i enjoyed reading shakespeare i remember reading um the tempest cover to cover it was like my favorite Shakespeare novel but then I was also fascinated with the with the sciences, the fact that there was always something new to discover. And then we had a library in my secondary school where we would go and read books. I would go and read novels in the library and also read science encyclopedias. And I was always fascinated with the world of science. So because I'm, I've always been an adventurous person and I like challenges. So I felt like the arts was going to be very easy for me, <laughs> even if I was excelling in the arts and stuff. Yeah. And yeah, I also excelled in the sciences, but no, it wasn't as easy as the arts. The arts was more like so you natural. Think you like challenge. <laughs> <laughs> you like to challenge yourself. The arts was more natural for me. So I wanted something that would fascinate me and that would challenge me. So that was when um, I think that was when I decided to go into um, the sciences. And then, um, honestly, <laughs> this is my confession. Now, I I wanted to do medicine. Uh -huh. <laughs> I think. 90% of my children went to medicine. Yeah, science student. Yeah, so um, I left the medicine because um, I thought that it was, for me, it was kind of a blend of what I liked as far as the arts and the sciences. Because in medicine, there are a lot of stories too. There are stories about how the body functions, stories about um, diseases. There are stories, basically. And then there's also science. So it was, for me, it was a perfect blend of both. Uh, to be honest, um, but now that I'm here, I'm um, looking retrospectively. I can understand a lot of things now because I feel more fulfilled here that I am. Um, I feel like the reason why I made the choice of medicine could also have been influenced by um, what I was being exposed to. There are no much stories about pharmacy yeah. from childhood and even till secondary school. In fact, I didn't know anything about pharmacy. So, I mean, it was funny enough, it was late till university that I got to know about pharmacy. And I've heard that with a lot of my colleagues that said it was when they were filling their jam forms or something that they got to know about pharmacy. So the story wasn't there for me to um, get to know about pharmacy. I think I probably could have even fallen in love with the course early enough and started preparing my mind for it. But um, like I said, now that I'm there, I'm beginning to appreciate it more because there are also stories in pharmacy. <laughs> There are stories about drugs, it can be, and pharmacy is quite fascinating. It's very, very fascinating, very challenging, and there are a lot of opportunities here. It's only for a young person because you can even go as much as creating a niche for yourself. So, yeah, I, I appreciate where I am now, even honestly, even more than if I were to be a medical doctor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's interesting. So, yeah. when life gives you, lemons make lemonade right That's yeah yeah yeah, yeah yeah so how long does the training to become a pharmacist take after secondary <laughs> school or high school okay that question does not have a definitive answer and that is right. because it depends on your location yeah. based on your country 
um, for us in Nigeria, and okay, I forgot to mention that it also depends on the kind of pharmacy degree you're doing because there is the B farm, farm C, and there is also the farm D. So what's uh, more popular in Nigeria is the B farm, pharmacy degree, but the world is now um, um, shifting towards the, in fact, the world is now in the farm D degree because that's what applies in most of the developed nations of the world. They're trying to shift more to the clinical focus of it. But then we have a few institutions though that have the farm D degree in Nigeria. But for what I did, it was B farm. And if you're doing B farm, it relatively takes five years. That is if there is no strike. <laughs> if there is no strike or as in my case, there was COVID, COVID happened and um, got to delay us um, a bit. So five years is what it takes. But some, in some African countries, um, the B farm degree takes about four years. And then the farm D degree takes about six years, including in Nigeria, farm D degree takes six years. So, um, yeah, I think even in other developed parts of the world, it should be about six years. But I can only speak of Nigeria where yeah. I am. So it's That's five years experience. for B farm degree, yeah. And then six years for the farm D degree. That's doctoral pharmacy. Okay. Yeah. Um, how competitive is this profession? And oh if God. it's very competitive, how do you guys deal with that? Wow. <laughs> It's very competitive and the competition can either make you or marry you. <laughs> That's the honest truth because pharmacy can, um, that's, I'm thinking about this, um, the training now, the yeah. program, it can be so competitive because you have a lot of intelligent people coming in, like, um, people who are best graduating students from their secondary school and the irony of it is that regardless of how good you were in secondary school you can't bank on that to your performance in um, the university because you just have to empty your mind and get ready to start learning afresh again because you'll be learning new things and you don't have to depend on residual knowledge all the time mm -hmm. so it's very competitive you just have to work hard you have to study you have to sacrifice a lot of um pleasures let me call them that it's very, very competitive and it could take a toll on your mind, your health. Your body and everything. Yes, yeah, so you just you just have to come in ready. Yes, it's very competitive. And to add, it can the competition can be quite unhealthy sometimes, but you don't have to think of it in that way. You have you don't have to come in with the mindset of um, because it's a very competitive um, space, I'm here to um, fight i'm here to I, I must make it either by hook or by crook yeah. no the end doesn't justify the means you have to still um make sure you do the right thing um to get your end goal that the real competition is yourself not even other people because yeah. the goal is trying to get better even if you were the best in your secondary school the goal is beating the previous record you had uh, whatever you were even if you were not a high performing student you're just an average student and all of that the goal is to keep getting better and not to compete with another person. It's to be Absolutely. the best of yourself. Basically. Okay. Now, I'm um, just an addition to that question. What about the job market? Are there job opportunities? Not broadly speaking. Now, at the basic level, like is a pharmacist assured of getting a job to a high degree, maybe by sixty or seventy percent? By hundred percent. Okay. So, the least you can be is being comfortable. Like you can just have the basic things of life, but then um, depending on what you want, depending on your goal, you can actually have more. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, um, what options are available after graduation and internship? You know how, for instance, in medicine, we'll talk about residency and there are like a hundred specialties you can find your way into. What's the pathway for a pharmacist so that, you know, those who are aspiring to be pharmacists can know that the journey doesn't end in graduating and you know, stopping there. Is there mm -hmm. the clinical aspect, the academic part? So what? There are 1,001 opportunities. And even if among all these opportunities, no one um, suits you, it's such that you can still create your own niche. If you want to go into the social media space, or if you feel like, oh, this, the um, conventional pharmacy practice is not for me. You also decide to do what you want to do. If you're a techie person, you can bring your tech um, innovation to the pharmacy. It's just that kind of field. So, in as much as um, I like to tell people that it's a very evolving field, and that means that every day new things keep 
coming up. For instance, even with the clinical practice, right now, um, especially in Nigeria, there is this drive to also meet the trend in the world that's yeah. to develop our clinical practice. So now you have um, you have consultant pharmacists in Nigeria. I know it's something that's still new, but then it's very fast, very quickly evolving. In the hospital where I'm interning, we have resident pharmacists, we have consultant pharmacists. So, so even in your own field, even if you decide to, to choose clinical to go into the clinical, maybe you like the clinical practice, you want to specialize there, there is still a pathway um, for you, yeah. And then if you decide that the hospital is not for you, you want to go into the community, um, the community is another field and you can still make of it what you want. You don't have to choose the status quo. It must not, it doesn't have to stop at you just opening a pharmacy shop and then dispensing drugs and all of that stuff. No, you can still do your, you can still be a research pharmacist in a community pharmacy. You can be doing all that things. You can do public health with your community practice. So you can still merge different fields and it gives you that flexibility it gives you that, um, like all liquidity too. <laughs> so it can be fluid, um, can be fluid through the different um, fields that are present. Let me stop at that point. If there is one thing that makes your practice so unique, what mm. would that be? Huh. If there is one thing that makes my practice unique, mm. one thing i would i would have said drugs <laughs> because we're the drug specialists right yeah. and um we usually call you guys drug lords drug <laughs> <laughs> yeah because um we we are the drug experts yeah yeah everything that has to do with the drugs from like, the origin to how it's mixed the formulations yes. and everything yeah yes yeah every single thing about the drugs like it's just in our hands that's what one thing that makes us unique so and now we're not just focusing on the on the drug because the drug is being made for human beings so now we're looking at um how the, drugs how the interact drug interacts with, human. with humans and because we've gotten to discover that um different people react differently to different drugs so it's such that um we're now looking at individualistic um, designs to drugs, mm. so we can tailor make drugs to suit particular individuals. So, yeah, it, I, I would just stop it at drugs, basically. That's one thing that makes a pharmacy practicing. I don't think there's any other profession that has that. Yeah. So, if for the students watching now, um, why should he or she choose pharmacy as a profession? Okay, um, I think. Um, I'm very proud to tell people that I'm a pharmacist because um, it sparks curiosity. People will be like, okay, what do you do as a pharmacist? And then I begin to not just tell, but also show how relevant I can be in the pharmaceutical space um, and in the society at large. So why you should be a pharmacist is because primarily you'll be saving lives regardless of what field, like, what um should i call it general you decide to um camp in at the end of the day you would still be saving lives the end goal is to save lives and there was one resound resounding point my lecturers made during pharmacy school i kept on saying that a doctor would save one life a doctor handles one life at a time but you as a pharmacist you're handling probably a minimum of 100 to 1,000 lives at a time because any mistake in your formulation, any mistake in um, the drug you're producing or in your dispenser or in whatever you're doing, it can have um, detrimental consequences. And sometimes it could be fatal. We've had reports of um, drugs wiping out a population um, and it hasn't been funny. So. But let's look at the good part of it. Imagine that you develop, um, you're able to develop a drug that can treat cancer, that can cure cancer, that can basically um, improve the health quality of people's lives. That's a very, very rewarding thing to do. Mm -hmm. It's a very fulfilling thing to do. So yes, that's a 
solid reason why you should want to be a pharmacist because you'll be saving a lot of people's lives by what you're doing yes why should someone not choose pharmacy i don't know <laughs> okay. i wouldn't want to, to be a pharmacist okay i think that would be based on your um individual preference yeah maybe you should just sit down and count the cost yeah. what do you like to do if you're like me that in secondary school liked both the arts and the sciences and um, you could still weigh them like me even if i'm in the sciences i believe that life basically is a blend of the arts and the sciences so even if you're in the sciences it doesn't stop you from doing the arts um i'm also a part of an organization that's the international pharmaceutical federation and i'm the publication coordinator for uh, early career group so i do newsletters and that involves writing so i'm still um i'm still using my talents i'm still putting into use my um my skills basically and i love what i'm doing as a pharmacist i'm so writing and being relevant to um the pharmaceutical space the society so yeah that's the question again yeah. why should someone not choose a special <laughs> I know. okay so, so the only reason i think the reason why some people wouldn't want to be pharmacists is because they'll say they don't like the smell of drugs so, but like i've said like i mentioned before even if that's your reason there are some fields where you have to have um to deal with drugs you have to deal term. with drugs yes like closely like you could still be doing research you could be doing something else that you, where you don't have to handle drugs so there's always a reason for your um, there's always a reason regardless of your excuse so at the end of the day it's just based on individual preferences like i've said you have to sit down and count the cost and um at the end of the day make your choice from there yeah okay. if there is one stereotype of your specialty what would that be Hmm. The fact that we sell drugs. <laughs> Let me put it that way. Yeah, so what's the correction to that? Okay. I don't blame people who have such stereotypes because if I got into the field, I also had that mindset. I also held that yeah. stereotype. Because when they mentioned, um, in fact, I, did, I don't think I knew the difference between a pharmacy and a chemist. <laughs> Okay. And maybe people just link the word pharmacy with pharmacist and attach it to that person sitting behind the counter yes. in drugstores. Yes. Yeah. So it's all about, oh, Shemi, you people are just coming to sell drugs now. So let me just give you the money. That they, sometimes they forget to think that you went to school. <laughs> yeah. You went to school to do what you were doing. Spend solid time. Yes. And sometimes they, they are unable to differentiate you from that um drug peddler on the street or an unprofessional that's um doing a similar thing as you're doing so especially in this part of the world i think it's a problem so that's one big stereotype how to correct it um mm. how to correct it my own i didn't correct it until i got into the field and i saw in fact it wasn't just about um going to pharmacy school but also about the exposure I got joining the International Pharmaceutical Federation. I saw a lot of pharmacists around the world, what they were doing. And like I said, I'm always, um, I always love things that fascinate me. So I got fascinated and I got to know that there is more in the profession, even more than I've seen in Nigeria. So, yeah. Um, to correct it, I think you should, if you could be more patient, you could be more patient with the pharmacist. Um, and you could be willing to listen, allow the pharmacist to provide you the value that they have. The pharmacist is not just interested in your money. It may look as such when you walk into a pharmacy shop, but no, the pharmacist has a lot to give to you. They can tell you about, um, beyond telling you about how to take your drugs, like take it one money, <laughs> one afternoon, one night. They can also tell you um, about adverse drug reactions. Yeah. yeah they can, they are like, and funny enough, the pharmacy is like your most accessible health professional. You don't have to get on a bus to go to the hospital before you say pharmacist. You can just go to the pharmacy shop, ask for the pharmacist, and then tell them, okay, this is what I've been experiencing since I started taking this drug. And then the pharmacist can tell you, okay, you can discontinue. And if it's something that they have to refer you to the hospital for quickly, they have to, they would do that. And if it's something that they can manage at the primary health level, they would do it. So you'll be saving yourself a lot of stress and you'll be saving your life by um, allowing the pharmacy to provide you with that value. Yeah. What's the core of your daily routine like? 
you know, you wake up, you do what you have to do. What does the job revolve around within the hospital space? Hmm. Okay. My daily routine, like my personal daily routine or... The work routine. My work So routine. for instance, you know, as doctors, sometimes we go to the clinic or in theater, hmm. we are doing work rounds, like for the pharmacist, what should that young person out there anticipate within the hospital setting now? I don't know if I'm permitted to be honest here. Yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> but um, the hospital pharmacy practice in Nigeria, especially for a young person, because as young people, we have so much energy and we want to do more. We want to apply um, the knowledge we've gotten from pharmacy school, especially with the stress that we got that knowledge. We want to apply it in the clinical space. So, um, to be honest, pharmacy hospital practice in Nigeria is not yet what I want it to be because um, I feel it's still a lot a cake. Uh, we're still doing it the way we used to do it. It's more like just come dispense drugs and um, the best you can do maybe some inventory control and all of that stuff. But um, I believe that a lot of young persons, a lot of young pharmacists will also love to see the clinical aspects, like to see the application of those drugs. They're not just be that. I'm dispensing drugs for Mr. A or patient B. I want to see how this patient is responding to these drugs. I also want to see, um, I want to, I would like to go to the ward to see if there is any inter drug interaction, drug drug interaction, if the, the patient is taking their drugs the right way. I would just like to do a sort of follow up. Let, you know, let my duty not just stop at dispensing drugs. Um, we could have that in a few hospitals, but to be honest, because I know I also did my IT in a clinical setting so i've seen it in different hospitals the same thing play out so it's not very fulfilling to be honest with you but that's not what should scare you mm -hmm. i think it's even what should encourage you to come in because we're young people and we're energetic and we want to change the status quo so we have to challenge these things and um and bulldoze them afterwards yes exactly and then bring in our innovations to play out how many hours do you work on average in your week on an average, um, and that depends on the unit you are in, if it's a core unit or if it's um, not a non-core unit. Um, currently, I'm in the NHIS unit of the hospital, mm -hmm. uh, and it's a unique unit. So on an average in this unit, I do eight hours. I think I do eight hours on an average. Daily? Daily, yeah. Yeah, so eight times five will be like 40. Then weekends, like Saturdays, Sundays, what happens? Weekend calls are... They are dreadful. <laughs> Is it 24 hours for the weekend? No, 12 hours. That's 12 like hours. eight things. Yeah. Okay. So roughly about 52 hours. Give Which is not supposed to be so. And um, I think we're short staff. Oh, God. <laughs> lots of issues. <laughs> yeah, lots of issues. Lots yeah. Of issues. So is it financially rewarding, the profession now, mm. compared to the stress that the job comes with? Hmm. Okay. Now, in the university, this is another confession I'll be making. In the university, I used to think it wasn't financially rewarding compared to the stress because I felt like, why in the world would they be stressing us this much? Why? But I got to appreciate it uh, when I got into the, into the practice. I got to appreciate the stress. Like they said, diamond is found under and is formed under intense pressure. And even when you want to refine gold, it has to be with heat and all of that. So I believe that I've come out as fine gold so there's when you come out as fine gold there will be reward for it people will not buy you cheap <laughs> yeah. and whatever field you end up at the end of the day um you would there would be incentives financial rewards maybe it's actually a very lucrative field and some people get into it for the financial gain solely and i think i should point out that that's a um, mindset. If you want to come into pharmacy, please, it's not just because of the financial rewards, because it can make you to do the wrong things at the end of the day. So, um, yes, it's financial re financially rewarding, but that's not the focus. The focus is still on the patient and on making lives better. Yeah. yeah. So for you, if not pharmacy, what else? What would you be studying? Like I said, I had 1,000 options. Or most likely, would it have been medicine? Uh, it would have been, it could have been medicine if it went my way. Yeah. But 
there was a time in farm school when it became very challenging. I felt like I was going to leave it, to be honest, because I felt like the stress was just so much. I had a lot of courses to do, and there was just so little time to study all these mini courses. So I felt like, and like I told you, I felt it wasn't worth it. So I almost backed out. So I, at that point, I felt like, even if it's to do fine arts, <laughs> I was yeah, ready to just do, jumped at it. Yes, I, I wanted to be a writer or something because I write. I wanted to um, go and focus on my writing progress, develop it, become a professional writer. And I think one reason I had was because I heard that Chima Amanda too, she was in pharmacy before she left and then she went to be a So I thought of doing a part, but I'm glad that things didn't go that way. Yeah. I'm glad that I'm where I am now. Glory to God. Yeah. So, mm. what is the one thing you would say to the aspiring pharmacist now? Hmm. To the aspiring pharmacist, that people in um, secondary school, people yeah. in the university, I'll tell you that, first of all, you should come in with your freshness, you should come in with your energy, you should come in with your talents, your gifts, because we're all looking forward to advancing the profession. We want to make this field better there is a lot that this profession has um not just for us not just for us but also for the world uh, right now the world is in need of pharmacists um the world we're looking for drugs that can cure cancer and other um terminal diseases right so if you can come in we are coming to play not just just about curing diseases also talking about um making healthcare accessible to people that um, it cannot easily get to, especially people that are in the rural communities, universal health coverage and stuff. So if you come in with your um, knowledge on tech, it's, you could bring a breakthrough in that area, right? So please come in, come in with all of that. We need everything you can bring in and then stay focused. I know that that's the usual thing people would say, stay focused on your books and um, trust God and all of that. Yes, all those things are important. Focus is also important, but still, um, I would love to see a lot of young persons with um, gifts and talents that can bring innovations into this field because it's going to make it even more interesting and um, make us desire um, to achieve our desired aim at the end of the day. Yeah. What's the work-life balance of a pharmacist like? Is it, well, it, it looks like it sounds good. It as you said, Oh, do, right? on an average yeah. yeah okay and i said it depends on your unit because if you're in a call unit um you may be doing more than eight hours okay maybe like 12 16 yeah, maybe like 16. <laughs> that's a lot yes that's a lot are there any regrets um, um i'm one to not have regrets because i believe that everything that happens in life happens for a reason yeah yeah so i'm even more grateful for where i am i feel more fulfilled here in this space if there's any regret i had i think it was back in uni when i didn't make a lot of friends <laughs> i think i missed out on some good relationships this is another confession <laughs> because and not because i thought because i didn't like people i actually love people and i love i love life i love associations good associations that is um, but I was trying to um, to focus. I was trying to make a lot of sacrifices, right? Because pharmacy school didn't permit me to. I don't know if that's a good enough excuse, to be honest. But um, now looking back at it, I know that's not a good excuse. But then that was my reason because I didn't want distractions. I didn't want um, the wrong kind of influences. So um, I did not invest in relationships when I should have. Um, so I think that's the only regret I had. Every other thing, every other thing, I think it works out perfectly. Like um, even the ones that didn't go according to my plan, I think it still worked out to my advantage. Okay. And finally, I think you've talked about some of the challenges you faced and how you overcame them. So I won't repeat that question. Okay. But to wrap it all up, what are the top three factors a young person should consider in making the choice of the course to study? Okay, um, the top three factors, I believe it should be your, first of all, and primarily it should be 
your interest should be your interest unfortunately we're in a society where um career choices are being forced upon children by their parents so if your parent is doing that to you i think you have to give them the good reasons why you don't want to do that so no matter how good a cause is i don't think you should get into it because somebody is making you to do it you should go there because you're interested in doing that yeah. um, so primarily it should be your interest and secondly um you should also look at your performance how well you're doing in that um course like if you want to go into the sciences you should check um if you if you can survive in that field <laughs> Because the scientists can be quite frustrating and even even the arts i would i wouldn't say the arts um the arts subjects of courses are easier are any easier no i don't think that any easier. it just looks superficially easily until you get into it so you should that's why you should have the passion for it so that when the stress and the challenges start coming you can keep your head above water and you can still push through so secondly it should be your performance so even if you find out that you're not performing highly your interest would still keep you in it and you'll be able to um to strive for excellence and you'll be able to do better but if at the end of the day it's still not working maybe you should have you should go back to your drawing board and then ask yourself some important questions yes then finally it should be um the job market to be honest um not every field of course um or any field of study that's put it that way would thrive in every environment for example if you say you want to be um you want to be what example should i give now there's people that travel to space so they're called astronauts, astronauts. You not to be an astronaut <laughs> in nigeria except your parents are wealthy and can afford that or maybe the grace of god was sufficient for you it may not be very feasible to be honest yeah. Because there's no market for it in Nigeria like that. No and solid even, national space program. Exactly. So you should also be looking at these factors if the market is there for what you want to do. Yeah. Um, if it's not there and you still have the interest, the interest is still 100%, then you should be looking at going to a region that has the, the market for it, right? So I think those are the three top factors for me. Yeah. Thank you very much. This has been an interesting and enlightening conversation. And on behalf of all the viewers, the potential viewers, we are wishing you a successful internship journey and also abundant success in your future endeavors. Perhaps we'll have this conversation in a modified format years down the line, you know, when God has taken you places around the globe and we yeah. can give a more global perspective to yeah. some of the you know, points we've discussed today. It's been my pleasure having you. The pleasure is all mine. Thank you very much. Thank you for this opportunity. And I, everybody that's watching, please make sure you subscribe to this channel. <laughs> make sure thank you, you thank you. Yeah, yes, please click the subscribe the button, like, button, like the video, share. share. Yes. Thank, thank you, you so very much, much for having me. All right. Bye. bye. <laughs>